Hello and welcome to this Control Web Panel tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss C groups in the CWP Admin Panel. From the dashboard to access your C groups module, scroll down in the sidebar and twirl open the Security submenu. From there, look for C groups resource limits and click on that. This opens your C groups module. C groups or control groups allow you to limit resources per user, such as CPU percentage, system memory, network bandwidth, or combinations of these resources. If you haven't already, you'll need to install the service to start. Just click Install Service. And the confirmation dialog asks you if you're sure, say OK. And then we can see the service is installed and we can read the installation dialog. If we scroll down below, we'll now see that we have the option to uninstall the service or continue. C groups allow you to limit the resources per user, such as CPU percentage, system memory, network bandwidth through disk in and out, or combinations of these resources. These limits help prevent users from overloading your server or crashing it if their website experiences peak traffic at a specific time or even all the time, monopolizing your server resources causing your server to serve only that one single client. Cgroups does have some specific requirements to make it work fully. Mostly KVM or dedicated servers will have the best use of these limits. There are some providers with custom kernels that don't fully work with Cgroups or have issues with specific or combinations limits like CPU and disk IO. For example, Cgroups will not work fully on OpenVZ and LXC containers. On OpenVZ, which we're using for this demo, you can only run memory limit. Notice that the limits for CPU and disk I.O. are grayed out and uncheckable. So these are unavailable options on OpenVZ, but we can activate memory limits. Some other virtualizations could also have differing issues with specific limits, but this all depends on the VPS provider kernel abilities. Once you've selected the resources that you want to limit, click Save. The confirmation pops up and lets you know that this action will modify Cgroup's limits parameters. These changes will be applied to all users' configuration files, and Cgroup's service will be reloaded after that. Go ahead and confirm. And our limits are saved correctly. We can also see that we have a table of policy templates. Currently, the only template that exists is the default template, which permits 100% CPU usage, 512 megabytes of real memory, 512 megabytes of virtual memory, and disk read speed of 1000 kilobytes per second and write speed of 1000 kilobytes per second. We have the options to either edit this policy template to use as our default, the first setting is CPU percentage, minimum 1, maximum 400. In this case, the default is set to 100%. The limit of 100% represents one CPU core fully used, with all user processes sharing the same limit. For example, two processes will have the CPU power of 50% each. If we set this to 200%, we could run four processes at 50% each, totaling 200%, the equivalent of two CPU cores. We should ensure we set the CPU limit high enough because otherwise some users' websites might have a slower response if they're running higher demanding scripts. The next limit we can set is memory usage, both real memory and virtual memory. This sets the RAM limit in megabytes, meaning a value of 1024 megabytes will limit shared RAM for a user to one gigabyte. Here the default is set to 512 megabytes. This would be half of a gigabyte. So we'll increase this to 1024, one full gigabyte of memory. Alternatively, we can express this as 1G. Virtual memory is a combination of your real memory plus your swap space. So this figure here actually represents the swap space available. It's generally recommended to have a higher swap space than your available real memory. So let's set this to two gigabytes. The result of these limits is that when the memory limit is reached, the system will kill the most memory demanding process. In the case of a killed script, the web server could return a 500 series server error. 
The next limit is disk read and write. This allows you to set the disk limits in kilobytes per second. You can monitor these limits with I.O. top. The result of a disk limit is that user websites might have a slower response if they have higher demanding scripts. So we'll increase these both to 1500 kilobytes per second each. Lastly, we have the option to update the user's config files. Note that when we modify a policy template, if we don't update the configuration files for users which are already using this policy, we'll need to apply those values manually, or the policy changes won't take effect on the users who are already using that policy. When you're done making your changes, either save or cancel. So now we can see in the table that we've altered our default policy template to use a CPU limit percentage of 200%, real memory limit of one gigabyte, virtual memory limit of two gigabytes, and disk read speeds of 1,500 kilobytes per second and write speed as well. We can also add new policy templates by clicking the add new policy button. Here we can give our policy a name and we'll give our CPU limit a percentage and our real memory a limit and our virtual memory a limit and our disk read speed and our disk write speed. And then save our changes. And here we can see the new policy has been added to our policy templates. Now, when we scroll down to our user table, we can see a list of all of our users and the current policy that they're subscribed to. Within the table, we can sort by user, by policy, by CPU limit, memory limits, and disk limits. Notice that within the table we have red columns highlighted indicating that these columns are disabled. That's because up in the top here we have only selected memory limits usage. So within the table we can only configure memory limits for the specific users. The way this works is we can assign a policy template, in this case either the default or the template that we created called premium, to this user and that automatically sets their usage limits. For this user, we can set the template to default. And for this user, we can insert custom. So here we're not able to adjust the CPU limits because we're using OpenVZ, and the same with the disk read write limits. But we can specify custom memory limits. So let's go ahead and set the custom virtual memory limit on this account to one gigabyte. And for the real memory, we'll set that to 512 megabytes. And then save. And confirm. And now we can see that these user limits have been applied to this specific user's memory without affecting any of the other users. Each user is either using a specific template or a custom configuration. If we prefer to switch all users to a specific policy, we can select from the top bar here, the policy for all users, and then save for all. Additionally, on this page, we have the ability to either restart the service, or check the service info. And that opens the service info dialog here that we can read. And that pretty much covers the control groups module in CWP. I hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching.